talking about what you can give, not what you can get. And the underlying message of that is out of going to church, out of being the church. But unfortunately, some people seek a church for all the wrong reasons. What they can get out of it. A social club, a place to get money from people, food, child care, amenities, you name it. But sometimes people have the wrong mindset in finding a church. They look at the building. Oh, well, that's a big, nice building, so let's go there. Yeah. You know, we were at a big, nice church yeah. yesterday, and, and I'm not saying anything about the people because every person that we met was friendly. Oh, yes. Every person that we met was nice. Oh, yeah. But unfortunately, some folks pick a church based on the amenities. Yeah. They pick a church based on how big it is or... You know, what luxuries are there? And I'm not saying any of those folks did that, but they're out there. Those type of folks are. But we need to pick a church that has the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Not just some of the Word, because you can find any church that will preach a scripture, but a church that's not willing to compromise. A church that will give the whole of the Word. Amen. Amen. Whether it hurts people's feelings or not, that's not up to us to decide. But we accept that. We like that. Yes, I want to hear stuff, the hard stuff too. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do I go to a place that has the Spirit? Yes. yes. That's the number one thing. Yes, indeed. Because if, if God isn't there, if, if God is not there, well, we've already established that God can be anywhere, but if you... If you don't know that His presence is there, if you can't hear His voice, there's probably something lacking. But if we have that here, what a blessing. Amen? Amen. Amen. If we have a family with each other, what a blessing. Amen. 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 If you can connect with the members here, what a blessing. Amen. Amen. It's not a, just a, a passing hi, see you later kind of a thing, but hey, I love you. You know? Give me a hug. I've missed you, right? Yeah. You know, it's 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 that's what's what that's exactly what we have here. Yeah. Yes. We have a family, yes. and I, I believe most of us feel that way, if not all of us. But when when we see each other, it's like, hey, there's one of my family members, right? You know, and and when we don't see you, it's like, where's my family member? You know, we miss you, right? Yeah. Yes. But I think if we had a sense of a desire to give of all things, I think we would even have a better family. Our family could improve even more. And I want to give you this quote from John F. Kennedy. I told you I'd, tell, I'd give you a quote from John F. Kennedy today. We were talking about him this morning. Listen to this. Ask not what your country can do for you Ask what you can do for your country. Anybody ever remember hearing that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of you older folks. Yeah, I remember him yeah. saying that. Sure. Now I want you to replace country with church. All right? We're going to do that for a second. Ask not what your church can do for you. Ask what you can do for your church. Amen? Amen. We need to get to the place to where we're excited about helping out. Where we're excited about giving. Not just our tithes and offerings. Of course we need to be doing that, right? Because if everybody just decided, let's stop giving, okay? We don't need to give anymore. This church would have to close down. Right. Oh, yeah. Because we have to pay for bills, right? Right. Matter of fact, we have a, a, a roof that needs to be repaired because it's just steadily leaking back there. We have a bucket that we just dump out. and I mean, it's just bad. But we don't have the funds to just spend our entire savings on that because then we wouldn't be able to pay for bills and other things. But nevertheless, we have to be able to get, we have to provide for the building. We all need to have a sense of, man, I need to give. You know, I need to give to the church, you know. 
when the offering plate is passed, don't be like, oh, oh, like a vampire to a cross, you know? <laughs> you ever seen those movies where a vampire, if you show them a cross, they go, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when that offering plate's passed, people are like, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. No, we need to be like, man, there's my chance. Bam. I'm throwing my money in, right? I don't care how much it is, whatever you are able to afford, you know, I mean, whatever, God says give, right? Right. Out, out of a cheerful heart, right? Not out of gr begrudging obligation. Oh, I guess I got to give here. Here's my $5 I got in the building. Here you go. No, give because you want to give, right? Give because you want this place to succeed. Because remember, we're a family, right? Amen. Give because you want to help out around here. You may not be physically able to do some things like cleaning, which we need that up here too. Yeah. But if you're able to give monetarily, that helps us in a big way. But there's also time. If you can give of your time, you know, in whatever way that is, right? Yeah. Any, any way that you can give your time, that's a blessing. Any way that you can give of your talents. Because all of us have a talent of something, right? You may not be an artist. You may not be a singer. But you have a talent that God has placed inside of you that you can offer in service to Him. Amen? Amen. He has a gift that He has given you. A spiritual gift that you can help offer to the church. There's a service that you could provide in helping the church. And at the very least, we all need to be praying. Amen. Amen. We need to be praying for one another. Y'all be praying for me, praying for the building, the funds to come, the people, everything. But we need to have that sense of wanting to give, a desire to give, not being like that vampire. Oh, you need my help up here? Oh! <laughs> Oh, you want me to do something? Oh! Oh, you want me to give money? Oh! We get that way about things that we don't want to do. Well, that isn't how a Christian should be, right? We need to have a desire. What do you want me to do up here? Just kind of obnoxiously. Hey, what do you need help with something? Oh, you do. Oh. We need to be excited about helping. Christina, the other day, she, she told me, she said, you know what? I'm going to start vacuuming up here all the time. I'm going to start vacuuming. I, I, I know it needs to be done, and I'm going to start doing it. And I like that. That's exactly the kind of mentality we need. Well, what can, it, what can all of us do? Amen? What can You ask yourself, what can I do for this church? Just like that John F. Kennedy quote, not what can that my church do for me, but what can I do for my church? You know, one of the beautiful things it was that we, when we went to this wedding is we ended up finding out that a lot of the members pitched in and donated and did and helped and served and all of that. And I know that we have that here as well. Yes, we but I think we all need to get, that, get on board with that. If there's anything that you can do of service, it is much appreciated. Right? And don't have the mentality of, oh, well, somebody else will take care of that. Because more than likely, they're not. They're thinking the same thing. Well, somebody else will take care of that. We need to say, I'm going to take care of that. Amen? Amen? You see something that needs to be done around here? Don't point and say, hey, that needs to get done. You do it. Right? If you can. And if you can't physically do it, well, hey, there's options of paying people to do things. That's always an option. If you don't have the funds, well, I know that's a hindrance as well, but pray for God to send the laborers because the laborers are few. Right? Yes. All right, let's get into the scripture here. First, we're going to talk about giving of our tithes and offerings. All right, we all know that that's what we should do, right? But sometimes we need a refresher. Let's go to Luke 6, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, 
shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom or your chest, all right? For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So, also in the Old Testament, God talks about tithing. And it's in Malachi, and he says, test me on this. Test me. And here in the New Testament, he confirms that same truth. In the Old Testament, it was an obligation. You had to give this. You're, it's a mandatory, off the top, better do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, we're in the New Testament, it's more of, more of out of cheerfulness. We should want to, right? We should want to help out, right? Right. So, when we do give, He still gives the same promise. Yeah. When you give, in whatever measure it is, it's going to be given back to you plus. plus. It's an investment if you really want to think about it. Mm -hmm. When you give to God, you're, you're putting in an investment if you really believe Him and take Him for His Word. Now, if you don't believe Him and you don't trust Him at His Word and you're too fearful about what will happen if you give that money... Well, anything done in fear is sin. All right? Anything that is not done in faith is sin to you. So don't be that way. He wants us to be cheerful givers. So if we give $20, more than likely He's going to double that for us. More than likely He's going to give more. And I've actually heard testimony from a couple of you that when you gave, you received money not too long after that. Miss Julie, I know you were one of them. Now, was it double or was it what? Was it the exact same? I gave my last $3 one time and then within an hour of getting home, I had $30. Boom. Wow. That's, ten that, that's 10 times, right? That's, one wow. time that that yeah, that's just once. That's just one of the times. Her last $3. Well, she might have been thinking, man, I want to go to Sonic. <laughs> Get me a good old cherry limeade or whatever your favorite drink is. But she said, you know what? I'm gonna, I know the church needs money, and I'm going to help, and I'm going to give my last $3. It's only $3, but it's my last $3. Right? Okay. She gave it. Boom. God said, you won't give to me? 30 bucks. <laughs> That's an investment, right? right? You can't hope for a return like that anywhere else. You go to the stock market, it's up and down. You put $100 in, you might get it sucked out and nothing ever comes back your way. Mm -hmm. But you give to God, He says, test me on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. He might bless your socks off. And it might not just be monetarily. You might have been praying hard for something. And you give, and He says, here's your answer. And He answers your prayer. Now that was worth more than the money, right? Right. Amen. The answered prayer is way more important. But he saw your faithfulness in giving and he says, here you go. That is how good our God is. Amen. And I love how he phrases it in here. He says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure. Pressed down and shaken together and running over. Whatever you give, He gives back in abundance is what He's saying. He's going to bless your socks off. I love that. Amen. Here's another one. 2 Corinthians 9, 6-7. And I won't talk too long about tithing because I know it gets us all squirming in our seats. <laughs> but I want you to be blessed, folks. I, I don't like spending too much time on it, but I also don't want to spend too little of time. Because I want you to be blessed too. And obviously we need help. You know, this church, you know, needs things, you know. And that's just anywhere you go. And, and most older folks know that. That's just the kind of thing that just needs to be done. But listen to this one as well. 2 Corinthians 9, 6-7. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity. You feel like it's an obligation. For God loves a cheerful giver. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. 
Don't you want to do something that God loves? Yes. The next time the offering plate is passed, don't do this. <laughs> oh, goodness. It won't hurt you, folks, I promise. <laughs> I'm telling you. But if you sow sparingly, then you will reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. This ain't my promise to you folks. Look it up for yourself. Read your Bibles for yourself. This is in the Word of God in the New Testament, not the Old. If you give, God's given back to you. Whatever it may be. You give of your money, it's going to be given back to you. You give of your time, for some reason, time's going to open up for you. You give of your time, in service to God, He's going to just open doors when you got a lot of free time out of nowhere. How did this happen? Man, I got my boss just gave me a week off for some reason. Yeah. You know, I mean, it can happen though. Yeah. It can happen. Mom, speaking of you, you had to drive so much to Galveston, to UTMB, all the time, didn't you? Hours. What a hassle. How much time was wasted in doing that? Three hours a day. Three hours a day. Look what God did to you. Oh, yeah. You serve up here. You give up your time in service to Him. And guess what He did for you? He lets you work from home now. Mm -hmm. right. So you know that's true. God can open up passages of time for you that you did not see coming. He can offer new techniques for you at your job to where it feels like time's flying by. There's all kinds of ways that He can help you in your life if you give. Amen. But you have to have a heart for it. You can't feel like the vampire. Oh, you have to have a desire for it. He loves a cheerful giver. Not one who's given grudgingly. Uh, they always ask for money up here. Uh. <laughs> That's not what He wants. He wants us to want to do it, right? He wants us to want to give. To like it. To enjoy it. In all things. Right. So we were just focusing on money there. But now let's talk a little bit about time. Time. We need to give our time as well. Ephesians 5.16 Redeeming the time because the days are evil. One of the best ways that you can redeem time is being here. Yeah. Being here. Give your time to God. Come to church. The days are evil. We already know that. These times are evil is what it's saying. Oh, yeah. But not this particular day. Today's Halloween. I don't like Halloween. You may, that's your thing or whatever. But today is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. This ain't Halloween to me. This is the day of the Lord, right? Amen. But the days are evil. The times are evil. So we need to know how to redeem that time and give it back to Him. God gives us 24 hours in a day. How are we spending it for Him? What time are you giving back to Him? Are you spending all of it for yourself? Or are you giving some back to Him? Right? Some back in service. Right? Some back in prayer. Some back in study. You know, think about that. What are you doing with your time? Are you using your time wisely? Or are you squandering the time that God gives you in the day and maybe giving Him the last five minutes. Okay, well, thank you for that. I'll give you a little five-minute prayer and call it good. That sounds like grudgingness to me. How about we give more than that? Because God wants a cheerful giver. And God is a big giver Himself, isn't He? Amen. Man. He's a big giver. I love how much he's a giver. I, I mean, sometimes I get excited giving people stuff. Anybody ever get excited giving to somebody? Maybe it's a present or whatever. You know that you picked out the perfect thing for them or you baked the perfect thing and, or, and you're excited to give it to them. You want to see the expression on their face. That's the kind of giver that God wants us 
to be for all things concerning Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not looking at prayer like a, a, a obligation. Well, I got to get my time in. Uh, I'll get. I'll serve my time in prayer. Here you go. Here's a five minute prayer, Lord. I love you and thank you and everything. Bye. <laughs> you know. I mean, what is that? Eeyore. I mean, that's just save it, right? <laughs> just d d don't even bother. Wait till you have some heart and spirit behind it. Then come to God in prayer. Amen. Amen. We we gotta get better about some things, folks. Even me. Even me, I know these things and sometimes I catch myself doing the same thing. I catch myself acting that way. Oh, you know, I'll pray later, you know, or whatever, I'm busy right now. And, and it just, the day goes. And the next thing you know, well, here's my little five minute prayer again. Yeah. You gotta find time for Him and make time. Yeah. And if you already have a habit of praying throughout the day, that's good. That's a that's yeah. the best habit. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to run to your bedside and get on your knee to pray. Just anywhere that you are, just open up in prayer and just talk to him. Right? Yeah. Have the same mentality about praise. Right? Have the same mentality about reading the Bible. A lot of us have phones nowadays and you can just you know what one of the things that I like to do is wherever I'm at, if I have a thought about something, I'll just go to Bible Gateway and I'll just boop, 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 type it in and I'll it pulls up all of these scriptures on that topic, and I'm just able to read and sit there and get some, some Bible time in. If you don't have access to a phone or a computer, that's a little harder, I understand. But keep your Bibles with you and close, folks, because you can do the same thing that way. Amen. And they make Bibles nowadays that have concordances. And if you have a thought about a certain word, you can go to that concordance and look up that word, and boom, it tells you where all those scriptures are listed. What a helpful tip, right? What a helpful thing that we have access to nowadays. No excuses anymore, folks. We don't need to offer God any more excuses. He's heard plenty of them. We've given Him enough. We need to stop being a people of excuse and being a people of doing and being men and women of our word. Amen? Amen. David this morning, something I really appreciate appreciate what he said he came up to me and he said man I know I told you at the wedding that I would be here the next Sunday it wouldn't be the next Sunday but it would be the Sunday after that well I wasn't here and I'm sorry for that I wasn't a man of my word and, I, and I'm sorry and he's here today yeah. and it just made me think of all the times in these past uh, six years that I've been here if people say hey I'm going to come I'm going to be there people that I know people that told me way back before I even started being a pastor, hey, I'm going to come, I'm going to listen, I'm going to be there, still have not been here in six years. Man, have they had opportunity? Sure enough. What if I die tomorrow and they never get the opportunity to honor their word? What a sad thing. But David said, man, I feel bad about that, that I did not honor my word. That's how we need to feel. When we say something, we need to do it. Amen? Amen. I'm going to be there, then do your best. I understand things happen. You know, circumstances arise. But we need to have a desire to be men and women of our word. Amen? As Christians, Amen. we need if we tell somebody we're going to do something, we need to try our very best. And then if we can't, we own up to it and we apologize. Amen? Amen. Because, man, that, that, that's something missing nowadays. I, I see it more and more and it's crazy how how people just don't care anymore about their word they don't care about honor they don't care about integrity and that's things that this generation is starting to lose and our kids are watching our grandkids are watching well, Poppy said he was going to do this, or Daddy said he was going to do this, or Mimi said, or yeah. Mama said, they know. Oh, yeah. They watched. Oh, you said you was going to do it. <laughs> so we need to honor our word to our kids as well, right? Our grandkids. Right. If you tell them, they're listening. That's right. And they remember. They're like little elephants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't forget anything, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our talents. 
1 Corinthians, we're going to kind of skip around here and just kind of hit the highlights, but we're going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1, and then also 4 through 7, and then 12 through 26. So verse 1 here, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. All right, He doesn't want us to be ignorant. And he goes on to say, There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. See, God gives each of us something to help out all of us. Yep. Amen? Amen? Now, what your something may be completely different from what somebody else's something is. Right. Because there's differences, right? But we all need all of it. You are just as important as you and you and you. We need everybody here. You may go, you may stay home and say, well, you know, I'm just I'm just another face in the crowd. They ain't gonna miss me. There ain't nothing that I bring to the table that they need. That is wrong and a lie from the devil, and don't you dare believe that. Because something that you have is something that we need. Amen. And your presence, although you may feel like is irrelevant, is not. I guarantee you, if we lost even just one of our body parts, we would know. Okay. If we lose a pinky, you would know. <laughs> if you lose a pinky toe, you would know. You, you lose just a piece of your earlobe, you would know. Every single part of our body is important. And every single person that is in this building is important. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let the devil make you think any other thing. You are important and appreciated and we need you and we love you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we need you here and we need your help. We all need to help one another because we're all a body. And when all the pieces of the body are functioning in one accord and working together, this body works more effectively and efficiently. One of the things that we saw when we went to that church last yesterday is everybody working together, pitching in, helping. And that's the same mentality that we all need to have. What can I do to help my church? Amen? Amen? What can I do to serve? And here we go. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. So we're a body of Christ today. Amen? Amen. Amen. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? If you ever get to feeling like, well, I'm not that important. I'm just the pinky toe around here. Wrong. We're all important. If we were all the eye, we wouldn't be a body. We'd just be a bunch of eyeballs sitting around here, wouldn't we? <laughs> Every single piece of the body is important is what he's trying to say. And not one of us can say, oh, because I'm the I, I have no need of you. Right? <laughs> Listen to this. But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. There's a bunch of us in here today, right? Yeah. 
And we have even more that are not here today. Amen. Their presence is missed. Yes. Right? And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And on our unpresentable parts, or private parts, they have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism or division in the body. But the members should have the same care for one another. Amen? Amen. Nobody should feel like you're greater than the other. Amen. But yet we all need each other. That's right. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Because if we didn't have any hands, what could we do? We could see all the things that need to get done. But we couldn't do a single thing, could we, without the hands? So thank you for the hands out there that do. Thank you for the hands that see and, and also do what they can do to help. Amen. We need more of you. We need all the help we can get around here, folks. I can guarantee you. And whenever one person says, Oh, I don't have to do anything. I don't need to do anything around there. That puts even more burden on the ones that do. Yeah. But when everybody's pitching in and everybody's Fulfilling their function and their duty. Man, this thing is like a well-oiled machine working properly and moving and doing. And we can do even more for the Lord. We're, very, we're doing a very minuscule amount for the Lord right now. But if we start to get everybody involved and pitching in and giving of their time and service and fun. If this thing could get out of hand in a good way, folks. Amen. Our church could really be a force to be reckoned with for this community and against the devil. And that's what I'm hoping to see one day, folks. I'm hoping to see all of these pews filled. Not on a special event, on a Christmas special or something like that where we've invited other family. I'm talking about just every Sunday where we can see just these, this whole house full, COVID or not, Right? Despite all those other obstacles, just this pool of people that want to hear about God and want to be a part of what's going on here. Amen? Amen. They get excited about what we're doing here. We got to get better about being the body first. We got to start learning how to be a well oiled machine and working together and doing and helping and everybody pitching in and everybody providing and everybody doing things. And then we will see that. And when we see that, then we'll see more of God in this community doing and helping those in need. And that's what we're here for. Amen? Amen. Lord, I believe it. And I'm praying for it. I hope you're praying for it too. Amen? Amen. Here's another part here. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. We care enough about one another that when one of us is suffering, we're all suffering. When one of us is honored, all of us are honored. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's a well old machine. That is a body working together. And here we go. Part of that is our service. Ephesians 6, 7. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. If we had a desire to do service, not that we're just helping First Christian or we're helping Pastor Brandon, but we're helping God. We're not just helping each other, but we're helping God Himself. Amen? Amen. When you come up here, whatever it is, even to the most minuscule thing, you see a cobweb over there? You wipe the cobweb down. You don't have to point it out. You do it yourself. Amen? You see a piece of trash on the ground? Hey, there's some trash over here. Y'all need to come pick up this trash. You pick it up. 
Amen. 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 You need to, oh, the tables got crumbs on them. Somebody needs it. You do it. <laughs> right? Oh, the ditches got they've got oh, you do it. You pay for somebody. You there's things that need to get done. You do it. If we had that sense, things could be a lot better. Amen. Amen. And it would be in service directly for the Lord Amen. Himself. I love that. I love that he takes ownership of that. When you do any of those things, even if they're minuscule, you're doing it for the Lord himself. Anybody want to do something for the Lord today? Amen. That's the mentality we need to have, right? Every day. What can I do for the Lord today? When you come to church, what can I do for the church today? What, 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 I'm doing it for the Lord. What can I do? Oh, that needs to get done. Well, I'm going to do that. Amen? Oh, the trash? Okay, I got the trash. And you may not be able to do much. That's okay. Help in whatever capacity that you can. And be excited about it. Amen? Amen. And that might catch on to others. Having that excitement. Oh, man, there's something that needs to get done. Let me do that for Jesus. Amen? Then they might be thinking, man, what can I do for Jesus? And then the next thing you know, it's like wildfire and we're all busy doing something for the Lord and helping and, and, and it's just beautiful. Amen. Amen. And it's beautiful. It and don't think of it as an obligation. Man, I always got to do something when I go up there. <laughs> Look at it as an opportunity. I get to do something when I go up there. Amen? Amen. We're getting close to the end. One final one for service, and then we'll move on to prayer and then the conclusion. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Present your bodies, folks, as a living sacrifice. Yeah, it may get frustrating to have to work up here every now and then. Oh man, there's always something that needs to get done. But if you think of it in a different way, I get to serve God. It's a sacrifice. Yes, yeah, sometimes your time, you sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your funds. You sacrifice your service. You sacrifice time in prayer. Whatever it may be. But it's good. That's your reasonable service. What we should be wanting to do anyway. That's what I... Whenever I see reasonable service, that's just what... Any reasonable person should want to do for the Lord who has died on the cross for you anyway. Amen? Amen. I mean, man, did He serve us? Yes. He came to serve. For sure. He was a suffering servant. And every chance He could, He served. And He helped. And He did. And that's who our Lord was. And He is our perfect example. And when we look at Him, we say, What can I do? For my Lord. Amen? Amen? I will do it. And like I said at the end of the day, the very least we can all do is pray. 1 Timothy 2.1 Therefore I exhort first of all that supplication, or that's asking for something, prayers, which is basically talking to God, intercessions, which is praying for someone else other than you, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So we, who should we be praying for? Everybody. Right? Everybody. But especially those of the house of God. I mean, those who are, who we are in our inner circle, the people who come to this church. We should be praying for one another. You see somebody who's, who's going through something, pray for them. You see somebody who's not doing what they should be doing? Pray for them. You see somebody who needs help? Pray for them. Prayer should be the first thing we run to. Amen? Amen. Amen. I got to pray. Oh, oh, so and so's going. Well, cool. well, let me go pray about it. Or let's pray about it together. Amen? Amen. Finally, 1 John 3.16. By this we know love, because He laid down His life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That's what we think about at the end of the day. I get to serve with my family. I get to serve with my body. Because we're all 
a body together for Christ. Amen? Amen. And I get to lay down my life for you. And hopefully you have the same mentality. You lay your life down for me and one another and all of us. And we all work together and we're all moving and doing for the Lord together. How beautiful that is. Isn't it? And when we all agree on that and we all get to doing it, it is a privilege and it's an honor. And we get to thank Him because He wants us to do it. We're all moving vessels for the Lord. Did you know that God's in you right now? Yes. Hopefully you do. Everywhere you go and everything you do, He's with you. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. Amen. You're never alone. What are you showing Him today? What are you going to do? How are you going to give today? I'm not talking about just tithing, folks. You don't get too scared. <laughs> <laughs> Although we should. I think we all know we should. That's why we get so scared when we see that offering plate. Because oh, you know that you should. Right? You get scared because maybe I should have put something in there and I didn't and I know I didn't and I feel ashamed. Right? Okay, I'll get off that. Time. How much time are we given? In service to God. How much service are we given? How much prayer are we given? You have a lot of things that you can give. What are your talents, folks? What are your gifts that He has placed inside of you? Have you been neglecting them? I don't know. That's up for you to decide. You know what you're talented at. You know what gift God has placed inside of you. And if you don't, what should you do? You should pray, amen? amen. Yeah. Find that out first. Well, maybe I am neglecting it, but I don't know that I, what I'm neglecting. Because I don't even know what gift and talent I have. Pray, ask Him. Show me, God. He will. Trust me, if anybody wants you to get to doing something, it's Him. I'm just the parrot up here. I'm just up here just, just repeating what He wants me to tell you. Hopefully you're receiving what I'm saying. I'm not up here trying to be mean to anybody or pick on anybody. But I do want to see us all working together. Amen? What a blessed thing for all of the body to be moving and working and giving the way that we should. Help us to be a sanctuary for you, Lord. Help us to remember that we are your moving vessels that you've chose to be in. Moving holy temples. Help us to remember that and reflect on that each day. And like Rindy said, you know, she said she could do some things better. I can. I think we all can. We all can. I think at the end of the day, we all have room for improvement. None of us are doing everything we know we could do, right? At the end of the day, we know we could do better at certain things. Well, let's do it. Amen? Let's stop the talking and say, yeah, I'll do that later. And Let's do it today. Let's start today and make that a point to say, yes, I am going to give more in whatever way that you know you could. Right? If you already know, I'm giving all I can in this area, well, good. Well, what other area can you give better? You know, because we're not all perfect and we all lack at something. And if you know there's something you could do better, do it. Amen? Amen. At the end of the day, and this wasn't a, uh, uh, to, to harp on anything or rebuke anybody. This was just what I felt God telling all of us. Amen? Amen. And, and confirmations abound. 